بسم الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه من تبعهم ليوم الدين ان القران الله سبحانه وتعالى uses the oath to emphasize the importance of what follows and the oaths that Allah uses can be done by invoking names of Allah or by invoking names of the creation of Allah. Example, for example, an oath that invoke an attribute or a name of Allah is like Surah Al-Zariyat. And in the heavens is, the, is your provision and that what you are promised. And then Allah makes an oath. فورب السماء والأرض إنه لحق مثل ما أنتم تنطقون. Then Allah makes the oath by the Lord of the heaven and the earth. It is the truth, truth that your provision and what you have promised in the heaven, just as it is the truth that you can speak. Now, Whatever, uh, then Allah can make, as I said, an oath by Allah and his attributes or oath by the creation. When Allah makes an oath by one of his creations, then this using the creation as, as part of the oath magnifies the status of this creation. And the oath by the creation can come in two ways. Either can come with something obvious and well understood, and therefore, or it can come, come by something ambiguous that really not very clear and therefore you require some interpretation of it. Examples of an oath by something obvious is like an oath by, say, the sun and the moon. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah al shams wa duhaha wal qamari idha talaha, and so on. By the sun and its brightness and by the moon as it follows it. But there is also oaths that made by things that are not obvious. And the Prophet did not offer interpretation for them. In this case, how are you going to understand what is the oath about? This, the, you find out that the interpretation in the books of Tafsir are merely a human effort. That depend on the interpreter's level of knowledge and the time, which you know, you know, the time when they made this interpretation. Now, restricting the meaning of these, the meaning of these oaths to the, the interpretation that was exist in books of tafsir, actually does a grave injustice to the Quran because it limits the meaning. Allah Subhanahu made the oath by something that not very obvious because He wants to think about, it. and maybe there is something a new knowledge that will come will let you understand that oath better than the way. It was understood, say, a thousand years ago or something like this. So in this talk, I plan, inshallah, to, you know, to focus on oaths that falls in this not clear or ambiguous, that has no specific meaning, and therefore are subject to, you know, to interpretation and to offer some alternative interpretation. And as I mentioned, you know, several times, 
that the Quran, you know, the text of the Quran is divine. So the the, the statement in the Quran, the verses, the ayat in the Quran are divine, are revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Interpretation of the text that are not clearly made by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then are not divine. Because if the Prophet didn't make interpretation of a, a verse or a word, then people will make the interpretation. And this interpretation cannot be a, say it is divine because they merely represent a human effort by whoever made this interpretation. And they are subject to the human limitations and should be treated, as I said, as part of human understanding that this can change as function of time. When I was given the talk in uh, that your seven chances, no excuse, which I gave last, I think last week, you know, I pointed out that the Quran has two types of verses. Has, has verses, has one type that include verses that Allah describes as muhkamat. Muhkamat means that these are verses that very concise, unambiguous, and, and truly clear with definite meaning, and thus they need no interpretation because they are obvious. The term is so obvious. And these verses represented the foundation of our belief. But there is another type of verses in the Quran that Allah describes as mutashabihat. And these are verses that have no definite meaning, that it's not clear. And thus people offer them you know, interpretation based on the level of education, level technical specialties, scientific advancement at the time, but no one really knows the real meaning of these words or these verses except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the beauty of the Quran that you can add meaning to it as a function of time, as you, as you study more, as you learn more. And this is part of the miracle of the Quran. And any time I or other actually start giving interpretation, they actually giving interpretation around this mutashabiha, around these verses that does not have a precise or concise meaning. And when, when it is given, and in this talk, frankly, I'm going to discuss verses that fall in this category, that the, the verse and the words in it is not obvious. It's, you know, it's ambiguous. And then you, you can make the interpretation of it and you have no obligation to accept, you know, the proposed interpretation that I am offering to you. But as I always say, if you agree with, with the interpretation I given and you say, oh, it makes sense to you. And if you want to share it with others, share it as yours, not as mine, as yours. You already thought about it and this is what you convinced with. The interpretation I offer you also is not interpretation that I just invented. I interpretation I heard from somebody or read from other people and I assembled them and they present to you something that makes that made sense sense to me. And you can do the same thing. But if you disagree, if you then don't like the interpretation, well, just to consider it as a human effort, you know, to sort somebody trying to unlock the secrets of the Quran, and then you can come with your own interpretation. So let me start by giving an example. And this is the verses that was, you know, recited in the beginning. And this is a oath from Surah al adiyat And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to provide the translation and explanation based on the comment of C that you can find it anyway, and then offer an alternative for your consideration. The name of the Surah and the term of the, that used in the oath is Adiyat. And the adiyat refer to something that's come rushing. And it comes sometimes from adu, which is an enemy. So it seems like it's referring to a rushing enemy somehow. And it described by al adiyat dabhan. You know, it gives this, and see, you start with the turn, with the oath, and then the other continuously gives some description around that oath. So the first description, it say Dabhan. What does Dabhan means? Dabhan means it can be changed to the color, you know, to dark that it bring. And they said, you know, Dabahatu Shams. That means if you stand in, this, in the sun for so long, they said Dabahatu Shams, that means your skin color change, become dark. Or it means that also burn. Dabha could be answered, you know, Dabah al that means the stick was burned by the fire. Also, Dabhan means this deep sound, 
and this is you say blabah al hayawan that means a sound a deep sound that comes from inside as if you are heavy you know breathing heavily in it so it talks about something that is coming you know rushing and is an enemy that has multiple attributes one of them that it could be you know bring the darkness it bring you know burns it can you know it has a deep sound in it and then the other verses you know elaborate on it a little bit so the common interpreters for this they said what is the hadith is is you know an enemy horse is rushing to attack somebody so that as soon as you made that definition in your mind wal adiyat are referring to enemy horses that coming rushing you know and then it gets you fair frame all of the interpretation of the oath based on this that allah make an an oath by the enemy horses that's coming to do something let's look at the interpretation first wal adiyat dab what the, the interpreter say it's by the charger the charger which is the horses dabhan means it's panting it's it's a sound it's breathing heavily because they coming rushing fal muriyati qat that means that they are striking this were coming is making a spark of fire how if you interpret it as horses then you say the where is the spark of fire comes from it comes from the hoofs of it striking you know for example the rocks and then fal muriyati subhan this rider or this this coming up at the break of dawn فأثرنا به نقعا staring up there a cloud of dust فوسطنا به جمعا that mean penetrating in the center supposedly because they are horses attacking at the center of the enemies and then Allah سبحانه says Allah making that oath to tell man إن الإنسان لربه لكنون that indeed man is ungrateful to his Lord so what is the tafsir is saying actually this tafsir for this oath is actually referring to a picture like this you know it suggested that allah is making an oath by an attacking horses when they are encouraged by the riders to gallop so to running fast and therefore the the sound of their heavy breathing can be heard as they run the striking of their hoofs on the rank cause sparks of fire that fly from them The horses are racing because the riders wants to surprise the enemies by attacking them in the early morning. And as the horses enter the battlefield, they create a cloud of dust in the air, both continuous running and stopping. Following the command of the riders, the horses penetrate in the middle of the battle, in the battle between the lines of the enemies. and the interpreter then interpret the verse is how this relates how this oath with this scene related to man is ungrateful so the interpreter say okay this scene about the horses obeying the master allah giving us telling us shouldn't you be like the horse to obey your master if the horses is doing all of this under the command of the master why man is ungrateful and disobedient to Allah and not follow not obeying give not giving absolute obedience to his master so that is how the the most common interpretation that you find in the books of tafsir about this verses about this oath and how it's related to other now as i said this interpretation is guided by the the first assumption and the assumption is the term adiyat refer to horses you know a rushing horse is coming or attacking horses but that the issue in it that the the term horses which is khayl in arabic actually is not used in the whole in the in the surah so obviously that's an interpretation if allah wants to use khayl he should have used khayl and that will have been clear for us but allah used the biggest word because in that case this oath can be interpreted by multiple people at different times and because why the why the but the word the word the khayl or the tilm khayl which is horses has been used actually in the quran you know three other times so it's not like something unique allah used it in surah al imran in surah al anfal and surah an nahl but in this surah which the whole oath is was you know the interpreter basically focused the oath around it it has not been used it used the adiyat which is a general term 
for something, you know, coming suddenly and attacking and rushing. I said, because the basic, you know, term in the oath is ambiguous, other interpretation can be made. You can make your own interpretation. So there is some interpreter actually interpreted the oath in a different way. And they interpreted the oath that this idea is referring to the winds that are carrying the dark clouds and accompanied with a thunder and lightning, because well, Muriati Qadhan, that means that there is lightning around it. And when the rain fall in the land, you know, fall in the land in early morning, the wind will create dust, means dust will be created. And then the water that falls will penetrate, you know, through the ground. Now, so obviously both these interpretations are possible for the verses because both meet the attributes, you know, that of forming quickly or creating darkness, dust, the sparks, and causing damage in the middle. Though, however, you know, you can understand it for the horses attacking, but the rainstorm does not always, you know, cause damage to this. So, so let us think about it a little bit more and then offer another interpretation. And then let us keep this in mind. And you can think about it as, as I'm talking about it to see if um, at the end of the day, that interpretation is exactly what is the one that you, you came up with. We can keep, you know, first of all, we don't have to violate the words, you know, in making any interpretation of the Quran, the Arabic word, you, you can, it might, it might have multiple meaning, but you cannot invent a new meaning that did not, you know, is not part of the Arabic language. So, but we also, so we need to keep also another, so the first one we also need to keep the honesty about the interpretation of the word and to be accurate according to Arabic language, but keep two points in, in two other points. One of them, when Allah has said, make an oath with one of his creation, it magnifies the status of this creation. Obviously, you know, the horses are magnificent creation. And also, so the rain is tall, also the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it makes it possible that, yeah, it could mean this way. But the oath also intended to prove, to drive a lesson to us, you know, to basically make us heed something, believe in something, you know, truly believe in something. So it has to strike something inside our heart and our mind to, to let us think about this one, because as after the oath, there comes, you know, a response. This is, I'm making the oath for something, you know, to ensure that you understand this or you heed this. So, so let us take this second interpretation and suggest that the interpretation that it does not refer to, you know, a rainstorm, but maybe refer to something that cannot, has not been recognized by early interpreters who lived in, most of them lived in the Middle East. But we who live here in the West, particularly in like Houston or Oklahoma, can actually in the US can recognize it. Let us propose that Allah is making an oath by one of his creation that has these certain attributes. And these attributes as the, as the, as the description comes in, it appears suddenly, it have a howling sound, it creates sparks and dust and cause damage by gathering things in the middle of it or by getting in the middle of things. Okay, now, can we interpret this, that Allah subhanahu making an oath by hurricanes and, and tornadoes? Because they possess the, all these attributes. So here is a slide of a tornado. It creates a, you know, a tornado hits, it creates a howling sound. It does create darkness, dust, flames. You can see the burning flames. It's spiral movement to collect everything in the in the middle of it and destroy it. And you can see the pictures of it. So that's what the tornado comes. And all of these attributes are attributes coming in the verse. And as part of the oath. Now, so hurricanes also behave similarly. You can see the hurricanes. It's also create fire, it create dust, it creates you know, cause damage, it rotates around. Now, and the reason why, because hurricanes and tornadoes have the same general structure. 
both characterized, both are Kenyan and Victorinators, are characterized by having a very strong horizontal wind. So they they both similar from that, the way the shape, the movement, and so on, and the wind that involve in it, the end that sometimes comes, the damage that they cause, the sound, the fire, and everything. But there is, what's the difference between, you know, a hurricane, a tornado and the hurricanes is the scale. The tornadoes are small in scale. The, the size of it, the largest observed horizontal dimension of a tornado is one and a half miles. And they are very short of times. When they hit, they hit like few minutes and then go move somewhere else. Hurricanes, however, on the other hand, are coming in a very large scale. Hurricanes, the horizontal dimension of a scale can probably from 60 miles, but can go to over 1,000 miles. So it extends, you know, very vast areas in diameter. And they travel for miles, you know, and they resist for days. You know, a tornado, as I said, they stay in certain area for a few minutes. No, you know, hurric you know hurricanes, it can last for, for basically days. So could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be making an oath with the tornadoes and the hurricanes and that Allah can bring it to man who is not heeding the Allah commands? Is it possible? Is that possible that the interpretation actually Allah, when he said, well, and Allah referring to actually two hurricanes and tornadoes and as because the description he gave fits it, is it possible? Yeah, obviously it is possible because the words of the verse, you know, supported this interpretation. But the question sometimes is why you want to make a new interpretation? Does the oath by tornadoes and hurricanes is more compelling than an oath by horses or rainstorm? Possibly, but obviously Allah knows best and you are free to decide. You can decide your own. If you like the horses, you know, the oath, that's fine. If you like the, you know, the, the rainstorm, it's fine. If you like the hurricanes and tornado, it's fine. If you want to come with a new one, keep in mind the, the meaning of the words because the word is not specific. Allah did specify Horses didn't specify great storm, it didn't specify, it didn't specify hurricane or tornadoes, but he gave a term that gave a description of something that happened that Allah creates. So let us look actually at other oaths and and see, you know, if we can actually look, and they also fall in this ambiguous, you know, case. So the other one, it we look at this. Oath from, I'm going to look at Oath from Surah al safat which is number 37, from Surah Al-Mursalat, which is number 77, and from Surah Al-Nazi'at, which is number 79. So in, uh, in Surah al safat the Oath, the Oath is start with the term Safat. So that's a key term. And the name of the surah actually, and the name of the oath, the oath starts, was Safati Safa. Now, what is the Safat means? The Safat means an, some entity that comes in the row, in rows. Saf, Saf is something that comes in rows, and then Safan, and then follows with Zajat, and it's pushing something. It's pushing away something. And this is supposed to be reminding us that God is one. So whatever that oath with, it should, it coming in to remind us, your Lord is one, your God is one. And the common interpretation, you know, that suggests that this entity that stand in rows in the angels. So the interpreters say, what Safati Safan talk about a, the angels directly. So let us look and you know, how the oath and the common Translation of so, Uh, 
Okay, so what is the, the interpreter directly says, since he focused on this Safad that comes in rows as angel, he said, by those angels who stand in rows, by those who push or prevent firmly something, by those who bring the zikr, the zikr is the reminder, and you can interpret it as the Quran or the revelation. Then Allah making the oath with these things was a safat, which is interpreted an angel stand in the rows, or push something, prevent to something firmly, and bring in the zikr. Surely your God is one. Inna ilaha So that is how the oath. But is it possible to consider that this entity that stand in rows refer to something else than the angels, you know, that comes in rows and pushing something and so on. Could it refer to something that Allah subhanahu have put around the earth to prevent it or to protect it or prevent whatever coming to us, these things that stand and comes in rows, standing on rows, is preventing something that coming to hit the earth and therefore, Allah is reminding us, remind us of the power and mercy of God to protect us and say, your God is one. Who did this for you? He is protecting you with something. Otherwise, if he leave you alone, then you will be destroyed. So let us look if this is possible interpretation from something. You know, because sometimes if you telling, if, if Allah making an oath like this to to people who don't believe even in him. Well, how there is people who are not even going to believe in the angels anyway. So it must have a physical something that people can relate to. Maybe they couldn't relate to in the old time, but as the time progresses, people can relate to. So let us, you know, just speculate in something that, that honor the, the description and then see if it give us this answer in, the, you know, it is really, think of this. Because this, I'm making an oath with this to for you, so you would know that your God is one. So let us look at this, at this slide. And say, okay, what is happening in the earth? So obviously this couldn't be, people would not know it 1400 years ago or thousand years ago, or even, you know, a few hundred years ago. But now people discover this, which is the Ellen, you know, Ben Ellen Verdation bit. They said, what is the earth actually around it with? two belts that surround the earth. And if you think there is an inner radiation belt and there is outer radiation belt, you can see the slide on the left. And then obviously in the, in the you know, in the axis in the north and the south, there is a magnetic, the magnetic field itself prevents things from coming, attacking from the north and the south, but the sides also, and you need protection on it. So these are, you can consider these, are these standing some barrier Allah have put in around the earth in rows, not one row, but two, two lines. And this is multiple areas. What is the objective of this, of this, of having this barrier? Whatever radiation comes in, they basically, you know, reject this radiation and don't allow them to come to earth to destroy it. So, so could we interpret these verses to mean that Allah subhanahu is saying, by the standing in rows, and by the standing in rows is by these radiation belts that surround the earth. To firmly, to push away something, to push it hardly, to push or prevent something from coming, but prevent what? Prevent any dangerous radiation from coming from outer space to the earth. And then Allah, and this should remind you of something, what remind of you that surely your God is one? That could it be if this interpretation is, is possible in this regard? Because as I said, the term was Safa does not provide name or specific creation, but only offer an action of such a creation. You know, that Saf is standing on Saf and Zajirat pushing something, you know, rejecting something. And then so, so, you know, is the term refer to the angel or possibly to the radiation pill? Or you might think of a different interpretation. Allah knows this. But obviously, 
those you know who made the original interpretation that believe in the angels could not have imagined that Allah is making the oath referring to something that will be discovered recently, like I said, radiation belt that protect the earth to show that Allah is the protector. Allah is the only one who can protect you. So, so here is you know another because they just said that in the reason why going this way because the term Safat is ambiguous. It doesn't speak about specific things. Let's look to another you know example. The other example is an oath in Surah al mursal Surah al mursal is number 76. The oath is made by, and the name of the surah, and the oath is made by al mursalat al mursalat means something is being sent from ar -Sala. You know, something is being sent. And then what is this being sent? Fal-Hasifati Asfan, you look at the description of whatever being sent, this creation that's being sent, blows something violently and is breathing something and in the in this process with spreading it basically differentiating between whatever is being spread and then bringing us a reminder that there is you have no excuse not to know that the promises of allah will come to you so that is the type, this is the description of that oath when it says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have no excuse, you have no excuse. And then comes and says, إِنَّمَا تُعَدُونَ لَوَاقِعِ You know, whatever surely what Allah has promised will come to pass. <clears throat> so if we look at the oath and the common interpretation of what it is, and here is the, the you know, the scholar or the interpreters, have differed in the sense what is this a mursalat orphan orphan means it has like um, like orf of um, you know it, it has something hard you know it is you know like orf of a mountain is a top of a mountain so it's something not flat but it has at least a ridge on it so some of them said it is the angels well mursalat orphan referring, referring to the angels and some other refer to the wings you know so that tell you that you know, the, even in this case, the interpreters, you know, differ too. So, so it says, well, uh, let me see, let's listen to it from a, a better voice than, than mine here. Hopefully I have it, 77. And give you time to think a little bit. Like I stopped at the verse eight, which I didn't put here, but it, but it might actually bring that uh, the interpretation, it gives some insight to the interpretation, which I didn't include. If you look at the meaning that it's giving in, because we said, you know, Mursalat is something being sinned, they interpreted as by those that are being sinned one after another, which is the angels or the wind. And by the winds that blows violently, and by those that blow violently, and this is the wind, and they interpret it as wind that scatter clouds and rain. And by those that spread all over, and they talk about the cloud or the verses, you know, that separate the right from wrong. If, the, if you if you refer to the wind, then, as, you know, that those that spread all over is the clouds. If you refer to the angel, they said that they come with the verses that separate right from wrong. And by those, who bring the zikr, the reminder, 
the, if you talk about those who bring their minor, then you're referring to the to the angels. You know, leaving no excuses for the disbeliever or giving or giving warning. Surely, what you are promised must come to pass. And the verse I didn't put in, but he said, "Inna inna tomisat, and when the star lose their light, so somehow. You know, when you, you you continue with the with the surah, you said it is actually relating to something from you know something that exists in the in the in the universe in the upper atmosphere. You know, so. But so in this case, can we interpret? You know, this verses wal mursalati orfa that is something happened above above us on the earth. And let us look at this picture and say, could we interpret it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking, since the verse actually, the number, the verse number um, eight talks about stars, talk about the new. Could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be in this oath telling us about a star, you know, that it is going to blow up in the verge of blowing up and exploding? And when it explodes, well, first of all, when a star explodes in general, emit a wave. You know, it's a gamma ray. A gamma ray is a wave. And the wave is not flat. The wave, it has high, you know, up and down, which can say the orphan means it's something that has, has like a ridge on it. So the wave looks this way. So, and it is coming. And when it is explodes, that star, when it is comes, that will, what when the star explodes, in the verge of exploding, it will create these waves. When it explodes, what is going to happen? It is going to, you know, basically spread what's inside. And the temperature and the pressure become so huge on it. And the, from the temperature and the pressure, all other matters or elements will fall. Remember, the whole universe is started by one element, which is hydrogen. And from that element, that basically, you know, a proton, one proton, neutron, and electron. From it, as the pressure and the temperature increases, you get all of the different elements that we have. You get gold, you get silver, you get iron, you get calcium, you get everything coming out from this. What happened? How would these forms, when the star explodes and the pressure and the temperature for a short time create all of these other elements? <clears throat> so, so Allah subhanahu wa says, could be Allah subhanahu wa an oath with this one and tell us that now this one, when the star is formed, and then it will, al-fariqati farqat, it divides, you know, it basically creates a differentiate between all of the elements that will exist on it by the temperature acid and, the, and the pressure. And this we should remind you that you, as a human being, are actually created from this. Because the end of the day, we created what's our body from? Body created from this element. It's a dust, and the dust came from this. So it all started by this explosion of the star. But Allah subhanahu wa says, you know, remind us as of this and said, you have no excuse now. You know where did you start and who started you? And as much as the star has been destroyed, you will be destroyed. Your earth will be destroyed also. So could that oath actually bring in this image to us that remind us that one day all of this will vanish? Whatever the earth that we feel so stable and so on will be no more as much as many millions and billions of stars who exploded and formed that universe and all of the elements that we enjoy these days. So could we interpret <clears throat> this oath to mean by those that are sending high features, and because I said orphan means a high feature, and this I'm saying the stars on the verge of exploding emit actually waves of gamma rays, and this is waves, a wave has also high features in it, it's not a flat thing. By their state when they explode, and when they explode, they're blowing out their matter, that will spread violently all over. And the matters as it spread out, and this is, you know, when the star, what they call the supernova, which is that powerful blast, are the one that differentiates 
what differentiate, what they're referring to differentiate, because when this matter comes out, which is its elementary matter, it depends on the temperature and pressure, all of the other elements start to forming. So out of this pressure that comes, a hydrogen becomes all of the other elements. And then in number four, and this is a reminder that who remind reminder of two things. Reminder for that your earth, the element that exists in it came from that explosion of these stars. And then the second one, reminder that you also made actually of the as output of these stars, because you made from dust and the dust came from all of these explosions, the matters, the element that exists in the dust. Then Allah subhanahu wa says, other than all other, you have no excuse of not heeding the warning. And then Allah subhanahu wa ended by saying, surely my promise will surely come to pass. That my promise of this destruction will surely come, come to pass. And then, as I said, interesting, if you continue with verse 8, فَإِذَا النُّجُومِ تُمِسَتْ وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ فُرِدْ And this is, you know, it actually give you know, probably this interpretation of that oath make give it more legitimacy because it refers to stars and you know and the destruction and so on after this. Wallahu a'lam. But you can make your mind of this, uh, you know, if, if this makes sense to you or not. The last <clears throat> and um, you know example that I'm going to offer is the one from from verse 79. And um, and verse 79 is Surah Al-Nazi'at. Now, so what is... For, let me go to Surah Al-Nazi'at. Oh, so surah Al-Nazi'at is, is the same thing for Surah Al-Nazi'at. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the name of the Surah. And the first term in the oath, Wal-Nazi'at. Now, so what is this Wal-Nazi'at means? Nazi'at, Naza'a means you pulled out something violent, you know. If, I, if I'm holding something in my hand and then you rip it out of my hand, that's called it as nazah to something. So it talks about that something that, you know, that pulls out something violently. And the other, and the following verse describes that this creation that pulls out something swims in a race by a decree that will lead to create to great shock, you know. So some interpretation Inter interpreters interpret this to refer to the angels and they said what they are pulling they are pulling out the souls of the people you know but they but they describe it as sometimes they pull it hard and sometimes pull it gently when nashitat nashitata means you basically like a comb it out but so they said okay for the the wicked people it you know, they pulled, the, the angel pulled the Allah oath by the angel as they pulled the soul of the wicked people hard. And then by the angel taking gently, combing out the soul of the believer. And then they swim fast, they run fast, you know, to basically to take the souls out to heaven. And this is done by, arranged by a command of their Lord and so on. Let's listen first and then we'll go to the translation of it, the common translation. Okay, if we look to the, the common, you know, interpretation of this oath, it said, by those angels who pull out with great violence the souls of the disbeliever and the wicked, by those who gently take out the souls of the believer, and by those that swim swiftly, and by those who proceed in a race, and by those 
angels by those who arranged to do the commands of their Lord. So verily, you disbeliever will be called to account on the day when the shocking events will shock. So that is the common you know, interpretation of it. But if we talk about, since all of these appear to refer to something that Allah created that related to, to us, that something happened to the earth, could we consider that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making you know, an oath with a phenomena that we see in this life? What is this slide actually is, is showing? It's showing that the earth exists and there is asteroids and you know, comets always will come attacking the earth. And, you know, and what they you know, when these things, when this is comes from broken stars and so on, and they come out, when they uh, exploded the stars, when they come out, they come out and basically swim on the universe. Remember, the universe is not an empty, you know, it's dark, but the dark is bad. And you can see in, in some of these pictures, you see how they are shooting, you know, throwing as if people are racing to swim, you know. So they they swimming and racing. What they swimming and racing to coming, you know, to attack, attack the earth. What is preventing them from attacking the earth? We, you know, why, if this is, this is happening, you know, billions of them happen every, all continuously. What is protecting us? Is protecting us is actually Jupiter. When they enter the solar system, they get sucked in by the Jupiter you know, gravity, because the Jupiter gravity is so high. And therefore, they rarely come closer to the Earth, escape and come closer to the Earth. And when they pulled out, because the gravity is a force, so if that asteroid or coming is shooting, you know, going fast to attack, you know, the Earth, and then go around closer to Jupiter, Jupiter suck them out, you know, tear them out into to him, to him, to basically to it, you know. And that could this be that Allah subhanahu is telling us by this oath that, you know, you are being protected by something I'm creating for you that you even didn't have any control on it. You, we cannot control the gravity, you know, gravitation force or in, in Jupiter or any other place. Otherwise, you will be destroyed. But one day, this will happen to you and you will get a great shock. A great shock that something is going to hit the earth and they create a great a great shock. So could we interpret this verse, this oath, basically to say, by all that are sinking, what is all that are sinking? These are the asteroids and the comets that are sinking in this dark matter in the universe. They are being pulled out pulled out by what? By the Jupiter magnetic field. As they, they are the asteroids and the comets are, they are swimming. And you can see the picture, they show something swimming on the dark. They are in a race, you know, they're rushing each, they, you know, they are racing with each other. They're racing to where? Where they are racing to? They're racing, obviously, and if this, you take this interpretation toward the earth, these are all, you know, these are all by the commands of the Lord, of Allah. But one day, the shocking event would happen. In one day, the shocking event would happen. Could, this, could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be making an oath with these, with these things that, you know, obviously, if you look to any interpreters, you know, you know, maybe, you know, 100 years ago or 200 years ago, there is no way he could have, you know, actually have understood this or relate, relate to it. But this is what the Quran provides us. Allah make these, you know, those terms that are expand in the meaning as your knowledge expand. And maybe, a, you know, a thousand years from now, somebody will discover something and said, well, that oath can actually be more compelling. And let man shake 
you know, man, you know, from inside to know who is the creator of this universe by by that oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making. And I said, Allahu A'lam, and the end of the day, if you like this interpretation, you have the, the slides and want to share it with somebody, it's yours. If you don't like it, then just, you know, consider that you spend, you know, 45 minutes with me or 50 minutes with me here, you know, learning how you think outside, may outside the box a little bit. But as I said, you know, these are not innovations that I'm making, but this is something also other people have, have the right. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اللهم دينا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا فيما اعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فانك يا ربنا تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك اللهم ادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين اللهم اخرجنا من ظلمات الجهل والوهب الى نور العلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون احسنه اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وفضلك عن من سواك اللهم بفضلك ورحمتك على كلمة الحق والدين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين يا أكرم الأكرمين Oh Allah, spread your mercy upon us shower us with your blessings increase our knowledge grant us forgiveness and reward us with the company of the prophets in the Firdaus Al-A'la Oh Allah, purify our heart, strengthen our faith, increase our knowledge, and make us benefit from what you have taught us. Oh Allah, forgive our parents and all our friends and relatives who have passed away. Oh Allah, grant them your mercy. Make their graves garden from heaven and the grand of the Oh Allah, remedy our sick and all our friends and relatives who are sick. Oh Allah, grant our son Mahmoud full and speedy recovery. Oh Allah, grant to all our friends and relatives who are sick full and speedy recovery. Oh Allah, grant him, you are the only, only cure is from you. Oh Allah, grant him a cure that leaves no ailment or injury. Oh Allah, grant us the power and the ability that we may be grateful for your favor, which you have bestowed upon us and our parents, and that we may do righteous deeds that are pleasing to you. Oh Allah, guide our children, protect them and make them righteous. Oh Allah, we ask you for all of the good with our water with them. And, and seek your refuge from all evil whether we know it or we don't. Oh Allah, we ask with every name you have elected for yourself that none of us leave this gathering, but his pains have been relieved, his worries have been removed, his debts have been paid, his weaknesses have been concealed, his sins have been forgiven, and his needs have been fulfilled. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه من ذات كلماته سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه من ذات كلماته سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه من ذات كلماته والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصب بالحق وتواصب بالصبر وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته